So you've only got one day to spend in St. Augustine and you've also got company with you that you're trying to impress and entertain all the while keeping the excursion expenses as low as possible for all involved. And to add to that, you are overwhelmed by the sheer number of things to do and things to see. If you need some help keeping the day fun and budget friendly, you need to watch this video because we managed to spend an entire day in St. Augustine without spending a dime on attractions which this town has plenty to offer. Considering this was December 31st, we decided to forego the downtown parking garage because trying to find a spot there and exiting it at night during the peak holiday times can be quite chaotic. For that reason, we decided to cruise on Avenida Menendez, located south of the bayfront, to hunt for parking. In less than 3 minutes, we were able to find a couple of empty spots. You will need to download the Park St. Augustine app to pay for the city-owned pay station. On a Sunday, payment will only be required starting at 1 p.m., so hey, if you show up early morning and wrap up your day after lunch, you will end up paying probably less than 5 bucks, which would be a steal compared to the $20 garage fee. We started the day by walking along the incredible bayfront wall of Matanzas Bay. It's a wonderful way to immerse yourself in the history and beauty of St. Augustine. You will find opportunities to take boat tours, cruises, and partake in other maritime activities, but for today's excursion, all we wanted to do was walk around this breathtaking scenery. It's really incredible to think that as the nation's oldest city and first seaport, St. Augustine has been connected to the sea for more than 450 years. This marina offers 96 boat sleeps for vessels up to 200 feet and 100 moorings. This is the Black Raven Pirate Cruise, which is designed to be a floating theater for up to 127 passengers. They offer live and interactive pirate ship shows. On our way to the next best sightseeing pit stop, we really enjoyed immersing ourselves in this rich tapestry of history this charming city has to offer. This cobblestone path let us pass authentic structures that echo the city's early days. Walking through these streets gave us a sense of stepping back in time. The construction materials used in St. Augustine's historic buildings primarily include coquina and tabby, which are types of limestone. Coquina is a sedimentary rock composed of compressed shell and coral fragments. It is a soft and porous material but gains strength when used in construction. Many historic buildings in St. Augustine, including the iconic Castillo de San Marcos, were constructed using coquina. The use of coquina gives these structures a distinctive appearance and contributes to their historical charm. Our second spot was at the Leitner Museum, located in the former Hotel Alcazar building, which was built in 1888 by the industrialist and developer Henry Flagler. This building itself is an architectural gem featuring Spanish Renaissance revival style. The museum has beautiful gardens and fountains leading into a fantastic building. This place served as an upscale resort during the Gilded Age. It featured a casino, spa, and the world's largest indoor swimming pool at the time. The hotel was a symbol of luxury and opulence, catering to wealthy guests seeking a winter retreat. This place is one of many newly engaged couples' favorite wedding venues in North Florida. From cozy gatherings of 40 to lavish affairs with up to 225 guests, the Leitner Museum's elegance and versatility make it an ideal choice for an unforgettable St. Augustine wedding. The museum's courtyard is particularly noteworthy for its elegance and historic charm. It's a lush garden oasis with towering palms shooting up to the sky. The brides and grooms love to get married at the center of the bridge over a beautiful koi fish pond surrounded by stone archways. Unfortunately, the hotel closed in 1932 during the Great Depression and was purchased in 1947 by Otto C. Leitner, a Chicago publisher who transformed it into a museum to showcase his personal collection. His vision was to create a space that celebrated the cultural and artistic achievements of the 19th century. 
Next on our itinerary list is Flagler College, which is a private liberal arts college situated right across from the Leitner Museum. This school is known for its historic campus, which includes the former Ponce de Leon Hotel, a luxury resort built by Henry Flagler in 1888. In 2013, for the first time in more than 40 years, the historic campus decided to open up their venues for weddings, galas, and more. In the Ponce Hall Rotunda, an 80-foot dome ceiling which displays stunning murals is supported by eight ornately carved oak pillars. Following a lull in tourism during World War II, the hotel attracted large crowds for several years, but decline resumed and in 1967, it closed and was sold to Flagler College, which has pledged to preserve this facility's historic and architectural unique structures. If you take the little staircase located on the right-hand side of the bigger stairway, you will be able to exit the Ponce Hall and make your way onto the luscious lawn located west of the Cannon Hall. In 2010, it underwent a dramatic landscaping architectural change that provided students and faculty with a new gathering space. The plaza is now able to accommodate 240 seats for presentations, lectures, and movie nights. After getting our morning walk, we worked out an appetite, so we headed over to 123 Burger House, which is just two minutes away from Flagler College on King Street. This place specializes in, well, burgers and fries, but they also offer wood-fired pizzas made with fresh ingredients. Guests can also enjoy something sweet with the restaurant's full dessert bar serving brownies, ice cream, milkshakes, sundaes, and root beer floats. Up next, there was plenty of fun to be had at the St. Augustine Distillery. This place was voted Best Whiskey Distillery Tour in North America. After presenting a valid ID, visitors will be given the opportunity to participate in spirit tastings where they can sample a variety of their products and that, my friends, sure makes it a popular destination for visitors seeking that unique experience. Tasting sessions may include their signature vodka, gin, rum, and bourbon. Florida Mule, it's our version of a mule style drink. Our gin is bottled 94 proof. It's a botanical gin, so it's not like a London gin. One part mix, two parts of seltzer, and two parts of the tasting provides a chance to appreciate the flavors and characteristics of each spirit. This place offers self-guided tours seven days a week, as well as guided experiences of its production facility, where you can learn about the craft distillation process, the history of the distillery, and the art of creating small batch spirits. Knowledgeable guides will provide insights into the distillation equipment and the ingredients used in the production of their spirits. The tour concludes in a gift shop bourbon bar, where visitors will enjoy an additional sample of the company's proprietary Old Fashioned. This is our bourbon Old Fashioned. It's four parts of our Florida Strait 88 proof bourbon with one part of our Old Fashioned mix. The rustic gift shop typically offers a variety of products related to their craft spirits, including bottles of their own distilled products, merchandise, glassware, and other unique items for you to take home to family and friends. This gift shop includes everything a bartender could possibly dream of, from copper cups to complete cocktail setups. If you forget to buy a souvenir or regret not buying any, just know that they do have an online store. You can end your adventure at the Ice Plant Bar and Restaurant for lunch and dinner, which is located in the same building on the second floor. We then made our way to the Governor's House, located on the west side of the main square in downtown St. Augustine. The original government house was constructed in the late 17th century, making it one of the oldest government buildings in the United States. The current structure dates back to the early 18th century, and over the years, it served as a residence for Spanish colonial governors, as a courthouse, and lastly, a government center. Today, it serves as a visitor information center and also houses the St. Augustine Museum, which showcases the city's history, including its Spanish and colonial periods through exhibits, artifacts, and interactive displays. We're now heading towards St. George Street, but before we stroll up and down this road, we stopped in at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Augustine. 
This cathedral is one of the oldest Catholic churches in the U.S. It holds historical significance as it traces its roots back to the late 16th century, when the first parish was established in 1565. This was the year when Spanish explorers founded St. Augustine, which is known to be the oldest continuously occupied European settlement. The current structure, built in the late 18th century, features a mix of architectural styles with the interior featuring beautiful Victorian stained glass windows, marble altars, and religious artwork. The Cathedral Basilica holds religious importance as the mother church of the Catholic Diocese of St. Augustine, which covers the entire state of Florida. In 1976, Pope Paul VI granted the cathedral the designation of a minor basilica, recognizing its historical and spiritual significance. Up next, we've got St. George Street. It's where the hustle, bustle, and beauty of downtown converge. This street is a pedestrian-only avenue which perfectly blends the old with the new. Historic landmarks dot its path, while unique boutiques, art galleries, and diverse eateries add a modern touch. The energy of St. George Street and the historical sites all make for an invigorating walk. If you want to enjoy the street without the crowds, consider strolling St. George Street at sunrise. And when evening falls, St. George turns into the home of lively nightlife with an array of bars, late night eateries, and music clubs catering to nocturnal fun seekers of all kinds. We finished off our walk on St. George Street by checking out the Heritage Walk Shopping Village, which is a classic boardwalk-style bazaar with breezy walkways and old-fashioned style facades to window shop. An eclectic array of unique independent boutiques can be found here. Also worth mentioning, you can grab a burger and ice-cold beer at Barefoot Bills on the way out. Next on our list was the Castillo de San Marcos. With St. Augustine's early Spanish colonial history, we were bound to encounter centuries-old architecture and well-preserved landmarks such as the Castillo de San Marcos. Constructed over 350 years ago by the Spanish, this formidable fort has witnessed numerous battles guarded by its sturdy walls made with over 400,000 blocks of coquina stone. The porous coquina stone absorbed cannon fire by compressing instead of shattering, making the fortress almost indestructible. Inside, visitors can explore cannon decks, prison chambers, and vantage points that reveal the fort's strategic importance. Just a short walk from Flagler College and St. George Street lies a wonderful concoction of kitties and coffee that is better known to many as a cat cafe. A cat cafe is a regular cafe where cat-loving people like us are able to purchase food and drink. You may watch them play from the comfort of the cafe area or choose to pay a small fee of $11 to enter the separate lounge to mingle with them. The original purpose of the cat cafe was to provide people who are not able to afford or allowed to keep pets in their small apartments the opportunity to play with happy and healthy cats. The cat cafe concept started in the 90s in Taiwan. However, American cat cafes put a new spin on the concept by showcasing cats that are up for adoption. But if you are just looking to spend quality time with some wonderful felines while sipping on the mocha, it's perfectly fine. After all this walking, we were hungry, so we headed back towards St. George Row on the hunt for a meal and happily ended up taking a turn on Hippolyta Street. We bumped into this place called DJ's Clam Shack Seafood, and let me tell you, they've got some of the best lobster rolls we've ever had in our lifetime. So this video is all about saving you some money by not splurging on attractions, but we never said not to splurge on food, so we dropped 80 bucks on two overstuffed lobster rolls and we did not regret it one bit. <laughs> then it was time for a snack, so we made a pit stop at Ben's Soft Pretzels located right on St. George Street. They sell freshly baked, high quality soft pretzels in various flavors and styles. These pretzels are really known for their soft, doughy texture. In addition to full-size pretzels, they sell bite-sized portions of their soft pretzels, which can be served with a variety of dipping sauces. 
FYI, they've got a very pretty outdoor area in the back where you can enjoy eating their goodies. If you happen to be in this town anywhere between end of November and end of January, well, you are one lucky fellow. Unless you don't enjoy crowds too much, because St. Augustine is known to have the very best Christmas light displays in the entire world according to National Geographic. After all these sightseeings, if you're inclined to spend a little more time hanging out in St. Augustine, make sure to stretch your day until dawn so you get to witness this incredible light show. This town glows with holiday magic from the ground to the rooftops. We made a separate video to highlight this event and we'll drop the link below. If you have any kiddos, they will forever remember this moment. And there you have it! This is how we had our very best day in St. Augustine. If you found our video insightful, we would love a thumbs up to keep us going. And if you want more videos like this one, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We did the homework for you, so you don't have to. Until next time, guys!